2002 Lincoln LS 3.9 liter rear brake pad replacement, rear brake rotor replacement, rear caliper replacement. So what kind of wheels you got? I got this with the Phillips screw in it, all bolts and nuts. Everything turning is left to loosen. That's counterclockwise, right to tighten, clockwise. So take this off. We've got our lug nuts, five 19 millimeter lug nuts. We'll uh, take those off. Got some pretty good metal underneath here to jack up on if you want. You can probably jack up on the rear differential, center the pumpkin, and lift the vehicle up, get both sides off the ground. Use safety stands, protect yourself. <clears throat> Before you jack it up, break the bolts loose a turn or two, then go ahead and jack it up and get the tire off the rest of the way for you. So bolt sizes don't matter too much, they can change, but right now I'm dealing with 12 millimeter here, and I believe 15 millimeter for the bracket on the back side. So we got a brake rotor, brake caliper mount, and brake caliper, bleeder screw. So of course we'll have a new one, new caliper, and we got our emergency brake cable. It's a little tricky to get, it's got three prongs that kind of stick out like this, and you need to collapse the prongs to get it to slide through the hole. So we'll work on that. A couple tips and tricks. I used a uh, zip tie and pulled it. That's kind of worked for me. And then also you can use a, a real small clamp, hose clamp, and tighten it down. That'll help you slide it through the hole. So we'll work on that right there. Maybe first. And our 10 millimeter hose. Uh, banjo bolt has a copper washer on this side and a copper washer on the other side of the line there. That's the overview, outer brake pad, inner brake pad. I'm gonna slide this on there and then tighten it down, hopefully claps all the little fingers. <clears throat> A little tricky to collapse it and still pull it through. <laughs> Looks like it's working. I'll just uh, loosen up that clamp and uh, keep pulling on the cable. Boom, works pretty well. So if you're just doing rear brakes, you probably don't need to do that step though, but we're doing the caliper. So if you're gonna just do rear brake pads and rotors, they just kinda slide on and off here, pretty easy peasy. As you'll see later, we'll put a little lubricant on the ends where it rides in here. But uh, otherwise, if you're going to just do brakes and pads and rotors, you need to collapse your piston here. It's got two notches. You'll need to get a kind of a special tool that collapses pistons. See what we do with the needle nose. I can often do it with the needle nose if the calipers are in good shape.
So here's the example, it has a couple little teeth, little knobbies that fit into the piston. And you set it up and then you just try and collapse it. We'll see if it works. I don't remember exactly. I'm not going to do the whole thing because I'm replacing calipers, but that's the idea. Turn this to push the piston in. Turn that to keep forcing it uh, inward as well. You can get a kit, maybe even rent it from your local parts store. Seems like they're more friendly that way nowadays. Alright, but onward and continuing with brake caliper replacement. All right, so then we're getting the uh, caliper mount bolts here, 15 millimeter. So they have Loctite on there, so they're uh, stiff to take out, so you might need a half inch breaker bar. This is my setup right here. I'm gonna use a gun, but 15 millimeter and a swivel and an extension. Oh, not much Loctite on these. The other side maybe had more, but there's some buildup on there. And we'll clean this up. And uh, if you have Loctite, go ahead and use it blue Loctite. If not, I'm sure the 76, I think, foot pounds are tight enough. It's not going to go anywhere as long as you torque it. Get your rotor machined or replaced. If you're going to uh, have the machine, you certainly should, probably want to be gentle or use a block of wood and pound on that. I have a new rotor all ready to go. Most rotors will come with an anti-rust film on it. You want to wash it off with some warm soap and water and towel dry it. Here's our new caliper. I'm going to take the 12 millimeter bolts out and just mount the bracket. You could certainly try to uh, install the brake pads right in here, but I'm not going to worry about doing it like that. Not a huge deal, it's got the little springs on here though. Cleaned up the threads, a little blue Loctite. All right, so 76 foot pounds for the mounting bolts for that. 
The guide pin bolt is 25 foot-pounds and the banjo bolt is 36 foot-pounds. Banjo bolt, 36 foot-pounds. All right, so we'll uh, tighten those down and then mount our brake pads. Trying to get uh, lubricant on the brake pad. Not as good for it. You feel a little spring tension when you're pushing down to mount the caliper bolt. Just make sure the springs are not poking through here, then they're not doing their job if one of them was cleaning up through this hole. Master cylinder is full, don't have to worry about running out of fluid. Inside banjo bolt is kind of stuck on there, so I'm going to grab with the pliers and turn this off. If you don't have a new banjo bolt, of course you'll have to be a little careful, but I have a new banjo bolt and new copper washers. A little rub down. Then we can open up the uh, bleeder screw here and let gravity do its job and gravity bleed. We'll open that up and uh, hopefully in a few minutes we'll start to see some uh, bubbles and fluid pouring out. And then we'll move on to the next step. And we'll talk about the master cylinder and bleeding. 2002 Lincoln LS calipers, caliper installation procedure. So we have fluid coming out, so we're going to close it up. I like to close both sides then and pump the brake pedal myself a few times, build up a little pressure, then open them up. Usually get a few bursts of air. Also got this little setup here. You fill it with a little brake fluid, hook it up to the hose. It'll balance, it'll hang there, and then you can pump and brake fluid will go in. Brake fluid and air will go in here, Then, but when it comes up, it'll hopefully suck brake fluid up. I've done that, we do that, you know, until the bottle's about half full. Keep an eye on the master cylinder, it'll probably be good for you. Although I often do see, when I have an assistant help me bleed brakes under pressure when someone step brakes, it'll seem to air some, so it's the center.
Here's the master cylinder and the cap. This goes on there. Ooh. Nice warning, clean. Use dot three or four, but we're using three. Ooh. Got a maximum line right there. Use a flashlight if you need to. You can see it's right about the max right now. Ah, land it on the ground. Good. We go a little over full because we're gonna bleed. So just want to uh, keep brake fluid from spilling over here because brake fluid can do damage to the paint. So. Well, let's avoid that, and now we're ready to have someone sit in the car. We'll have them push on the brakes three or four times to get some pressure, then they'll hold the pedal down, then I will open up the bleed screw, and then they their pedal will down. Then I'll tighten up the bleeder screw, and re repeat the procedure three times. Teams of nice brake fluid with no air in it, and then it'll be done. Okay, here we go. Pumped it a couple times and we're gonna open it up. Shoot myself in the hand with some brake fluid. Okay, pump it. Pump it two or three times and hold it down. Ooh. Looking pretty good and we'll do it one more time. Go ahead, pump it. Looking good. Tighten this down. Okay, thanks. Take a break here. <clears throat> Do the same for the other side.